So starting out, I am just going to mix up my green clay. I was going for a really like bright, vibrant green, mixing in some yellows and beige, and then some white to just kind of give it some balance. And then I'm gonna take a few chunks from that and mix in a little bit of yellow, some more white, and then a little bit of a darker green. Those will be the variant colors for the triangles that'll go on the grass later. So I'm just gonna use my circle cutter, cut out the base of the palm top and push down around the edges, smooth everything out and then tuck in the bottom. Okay, I've rolled out all of my sheets of my other green clay, and I'm just gonna be cutting those into multiple triangles, varying sizes and kind of shapes to just give it a lot more dimension. And then I'm gonna place them in, in no particular rhyme or reason, just all over the place because that's what Animal Crossing grass is and it's wonderful. And then I'm gonna take a very smooth uh, tool that has a ruler, oh, not a ruler. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean, it's a smooth tool and I'm rolling over the edges so that way the triangles on top are the same size and like layer as the original grass. And then I'm gonna add some texture with a toothbrush, not too much, but just enough to give it that not so smooth look. Okay, I am pretty happy with it, but it is still a little bright for my taste. So I'm taking some darker green charcoal uh, pastels mixed with a little bit of brown and I'm taking a fluffy brush and just kind of dusting it all around to kind of tone down the extreme brightness that I was getting from the green. and then redoing some of that texture because it was lost with the toothbrush. And overall, I'm really happy with it. You can see the comparison of chalk pastel versus the original. Okay, and now I'm going to mix the colors together for the tent, kind of a mustardy yellow and a bright yellow. And then I'm just putting it onto the table and then pinching it at the top to get that good triangle shape. Make sure that the size is right. Get it a little bit sharper and then I'm gonna take my blade to cut around all the edges just to make sure that everything is as sharp and smooth as possible. All right, now that I'm happy with the shape, I'm gonna take my chisel tool and start indenting some of the details, like the door for the tent, and then take some slightly darker yellow clay, and that will be the little opening flap. Adding the extra little detail for the rain fly that is on the tent. I'm assuming that's what it is. Smoothing everything out so everything looks clean. It's still a little lumpy, so I'm just gonna keep working with it. And decide on the exact placement that I want because it ended up being a little bigger than I had imagined in my head, but I was still happy with it. And I finally settled on to the side. And these are going to be wooden posts, so they're just a, a darker brown clay with a lighter brown clay. And I originally wanted to actually wrap my thread around, but that ended up being an absolutely horrible idea and didn't work and it was way too frustrating. So instead, I just decided to add an indention into the grass, place the log post in, poke a hole, then stick the thread in with a little bit of bacon bond for it to have a little bit of security and then take an extra piece of brown clay and kind of press it in so that way that thread is going nowhere. I've done all four posts and now I'm kind of doing a really similar thing. I'm putting some holes in the tent itself and pressing the thread into the holes on the tent and then I will trim the excess thread.
Okay, now I'm gonna add the top parts of the rain fly that goes over the tent. I'm just trimming it to size. And I wanna make sure I leave a little bit of an opening where the thread goes in because that's the ropes and they're it's actually supposed to be connected. So I'm just smoothing everything until it looks like it is just one solid piece. I don't want any harsh lines. And then adding a little bit of silver clay for the hook that the ropes would be attached to. I'm using some brown clay to make a mailbox that will go in front of our lovely tent. But this one ended up being a little fat, so I rolled it just a little bit more, trimmed it, and I was a lot happier with it because it was too fat before. <laughs> so we have a rectangle cut out for our mailbox, adding a little bit of that wooden texture, and then some very tiny little silver pieces that are the nails that are really holding it all together. Smoothing in the edges just a little bit, and then adding a small snake of blue and a ball of blue clay in a itsy bitsy teeny weeny little envelope that will go on the mailbox flag. This was super tiny and my camera was in my way and I was having a really hard time, but I like it. <laughs> Now to start on the main part of the figure, we are going to be making Mr. Tom Nook himself. And I am just taking some beige clay and then after I pull out the legs, I'm going to, the legs of his shorts, stick in some little logs for his legs. I'm going to bake it so that way it doesn't get deformed while I'm working on his shirt. Then I'm taking a kind of cone shape for his body and uh kind of pulling it around the body so it looks like that his shirt is, you know, coming over his shorts. And then I'm adding a little bit of a chest piece because his little chest pokes out of his shirt. And I know a lot of this Tom Nook is out of focus and I'm really sorry guys. He's very, very small and I was trying to keep him in frame on my camera, but I was having a hard time keeping him in frame, in focus and not too far away where you couldn't see anything. So I apologize. I made some kind of cone shapes for his arm, sticking another snake of clay inside for his, um, or to go inside his sleeves. And I'm just placing them on, kind of giving him a little bit of movement where he'll be pointing at the tent itself. Adding a tail, and I'm gonna bake him again, that way he doesn't get messed up while I work on the head. And the head is simple, I just made a ball, and then I pinched out a little bit for the nose. And then I use some very, very tiny little ovals of clay, of white clay, I'm sorry, for the eyes. And then I trimmed them at an angle and then I'm adding his uh, eyelids uh, with the same color that his head is and we'll paint on the extra details a little later. All right, now we are painting, I am dry brushing the tips of his ears, the tip of his tails, the tip of his hands, and the tips of his feet, and giving him that classic mask look that he has, trying to keep it even and not get anything on his eyelids or his eyeballs, and then adding some aloha leaves to his shirt. And paint on the tiniest little pupils for his eyes. And last but not least, the finishing touches of the figure we are adding some little blades of grass to go around the tent and the mailbox and just to give it a more kind of movement type feel and make it not look so just flat on the grass. Okay, and time to bake. And there it is, guys. I am so happy with how this figure came out. I was really nervous when I was making a super tiny Tom Nook, but I love the details of the tent. I love the details of Nook. Overall, I'm just really happy with it. I hope you guys like it too. Don't forget to subscribe. That's it, guys. I had a blast working on this figure. It was challenging and fun, and I'm just really overall pleased with how it came out. I'm very excited that the game is now out and I get to play it because frankly, I think we all could use an island vacation right about now. 
So with that said, y'all stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.